Yo, what's going on guys? How are you doing? Today, I wanna to talk about the benefits of exercise. Now I know when I first say that, you're gonna be like, Alex, I already know. You exercise, you get healthier, stronger, blah, blah, blah. And yes, in part, you are right, but there is so much more. What if I told you that as well as the physical and mental benefits you get from exercise, it can also make you better at gaming? Nani? Haha, <laughs> got your attention now, right? And while I'm pretty sure everybody knows that exercise is good for you, I mean, it's hardly rocket science, a lot of people don't often know quite how good and how far reaching those benefits are. And more importantly, you don't have to go and kill yourself in the gym seven days a week to reap those benefits. And since knowing is half the battle or knowledge is power, today I want to share some of that information with you. So if you're on the fence or maybe you're just like, eh, I'm not quite sure I'm ready to start exercising, hopefully this will change your mind. All right, so to begin with, before we talk about the benefits themselves, I again want to reiterate that you do not need to be killing yourself in the gym seven days a week. I mean, I hope anyone isn't killing themselves in the gym. That's probably not the best analogy. The point is, you don't have to be going balls to the wall or just like wiping yourself out in the gym to reap these benefits. A lot of people will often be like, I know exercise is good, but... I don't really want to go to the gym, it's not really my kind of scene, or I just don't feel comfortable there. Well, the good news is, in order to get most of these benefits, you don't actually have to do a great deal. You just need to not do nothing, basically. Obviously, it should go without saying that if your goal is to put on some serious muscle, change your body composition, get super strong, get super lean, yes, there will be a degree of uh, resistance training you'll have to incorporate, and that is gonna require setting foot in the gym. But most of the stuff that we speak about in this video, most of the general health benefits, you can get simply by walking. Based on the UK recommendations for adults, you either need to do 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise throughout the week. That's as little as 21 minutes a day, seven days a week. Or if you want a couple of days off, then 30 minutes, five days a week. And this can be something as simple as a brisk walk or cycling. Alternatively, you can do 75 minutes of vigorous intensity activity per week, which again, you can split up into three very easy 25 minute sessions. And that can look like going for a run, going for a more intense cycle, doing something that of course is going to actively elevate your heart rate. Or alternatively, you can do a combination of both and have some vigorous activity on one day and then do a few other days of some moderate activity. The main thing is that in order to achieve this baseline that you need to reap some of these benefits, you don't have to do a great deal. I'm pretty sure everybody can manage 21 minutes of walking a day, whether that be walking to work, walking to the coffee shop, walking to get your lunch. There's normally something you can do to sub out just to kind of get some walking in because that baseline level of activity can have so many benefits. So let's talk about those benefits. They're split into physical and mental. So we'll start with physical. I'm not gonna get all sciencey here. I just wanna recap the most important points so you know just why you should be caring about this stuff. On the physical side of things, exercise helps strengthen the cardiac muscle, which leads to a healthier heart, decreasing your resting heart rate, and over time, stronger lung capacity. Exercise can also reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease by a third. It can reduce your chance of a stroke, reduce your chance of type two diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. It may even lower the risk of some cancers, namely breast and bowel cancers. Exercise also helps increase your metabolic rate. In other words, the rate at which you burn calories. And that doesn't just mean burning calories while you're exercising. As you build muscle, your body uses energy to repair that muscle after workout. So even when you're not working out, with that increase, you're also burning more calories. Additionally, if you do begin factoring in some resistance training elements to your exercise, which in turn require balance and motor skills, then you can also reduce your risk of falls and other related injuries. Stronger bones, stronger joints, it's a win-win situation, really. And of course, exercise goes hand in hand with weight management, provided, of course, it's paired with a good nutritious diet. So that can, of course, help reduce the health risks associated with obesity. As for the mental benefits, I mean, first things first, exercise makes you feel good. Maybe if you're new and you go for your first workout, I can't guarantee that you're gonna feel great during the workout. You might be a bit like, oh, this is horrible. I wanna get out. But I promise you, I promise you, when you finish and those endorphins kick in, you are gonna feel great. Exercise is a fantastic way to improve your mood, make you feel great, because of course exercise releases endorphins, the feel-good chemicals, if you will, which increase overall feelings of well-being, improve your mood, give you more energy. Overall, it's just an improvement to quality of life. 
In addition to this, research shows that regular exercise can actually help you fall asleep faster. And then when you are asleep, it also allows you to enjoy a deeper sleep and enjoy longer sleep duration. And since sleep is how our body repairs and grows our muscles, this is a must. In fact, I'm probably gonna do a video later on on the importance of sleep because it's such an important thing that uh, I feel like it deserves its own video. But again, main thing is exercise can help with your sleep. Furthermore, exercise can improve brain function, which is of course gonna tie into the gaming stuff, which I'll speak about in just a moment, but it can help reduce fatigue, improve alertness, improve blood circulation to the brain, which leads to faster oxygen delivery, which in turn leads to faster thinking. And finally, but very importantly, exercise can also help combat depression and anxiety. And while I am not a mental health professional, it is a well-known fact that exercise has far-reaching mental health benefits. And if reaping those benefits is as simple as going for a 21-minute brisk walk seven days a week, which costs nothing, I mean, what do you have to lose? Again, I want to be very clear that I'm not a mental health professional. If you genuinely have serious depression and anxiety, I highly encourage that you get professional help. But what I am saying is given that exercise like this, like going for a brisk walk is free, it will literally cost you nothing, and you can just step out the house, then it's fair to say it's not gonna have a negative effect. Provided you don't, I don't know, walk into a volcano or like walk into a dungeon and have to battle a demon, provided that doesn't happen, it's gonna be fine. But what about those gaming benefits I spoke about? No, it was not a clickbait title. There genuinely are benefits associated with exercise and improving your gaming performance. It's actually really interesting. And while admittedly, most of these studies have been conducted with esports athletes, and most of us aren't esports athletes, it's fair to say that we still have played games in some sort of competitive capacity, even if it's just with our friends online. Either way, you're still exposed to some degree of stress and this, of course, is where exercise can help. To quote an article on this, improved mental and physical endurance develops from increased energy levels. The cells in our body contain mitochondria, which produce energy. As we incorporate exercise into our daily routine, the number of mitochondria will increase due to increased demand on the body. We'll then feel this increase not only in our muscles, but also our brains. And in the trials, this was then seen to give people major advantages in tournament play. And again, while you might not be a professional player or in the professional circuit, this can still apply if you're trying to go and play that sort of a uh, last minute match or like you're trying to sort of be the last one in a battle royale game or about to take down that opponent in that fighting game, whatever it is, if you're still in that tense situation, this will still apply. Secondly, the next major adaptation comes in our ability to handle and deal with stress. Exercise is its own version of stress in the body. However, instead of thinking about this as a negative, think of it as a positive. In the right doses, this stress actually improves your ability to handle the emotional stresses of gameplay. And in the end, this again translates into becoming a stronger opponent. But then finally, and probably most interestingly, the third adaptation is cognitive function. Extensive research shows that exercise can also improve cognitive function speed, attention, and flexibility, as well as pumping up your hippocampus, which is the part of your brain responsible for learning and processing new information. Exercise has also been proven to improve motor function, such as reaction time and hand-eye coordination. So all these benefits combined effectively translate to your gaming. You can react faster, you can process information better, all those kind of things that, again, in the competitive scene are very useful, but even just for us general gamers, if you're playing anything and you need to sort of process all that stuff, it's gonna help out. In fact, one final thing, I did promise I wasn't gonna to get too sciencey, but this was really, really interesting. There was a study from a German sports university and they examined the physical and mental demands of professional gamers during competitions. And interestingly, the study found that esports competitors are exposed to physical strains that are just like conventional athletes. Now I know that might be a contentious topic, but just stay with me here. The study then showed the amount of stress hormone, cortisol, going through the players during competition matched those of race car drivers. In in addition, esports players also had heart rates around the 160 to 180 beats per minute mark, which is kind of like running a mile nearly as fast as you can. This can also be an unfortunate thing because a lot of esports players don't realize the massive demands being placed on them and therefore they don't train for competitions, so this can actually be a thing they struggle with. Which of course then goes into explain why a lot of the time, a lot of the big serious esports teams these days do have personal trainers. They have people to take care of their training plans, their nutrition, because they of course realize those benefits. So effectively, the benefits of exercise are far reaching. And again, given that you don't need to do a great deal to reap those benefits, why not do it? Again, it is worth noting, if you do want to go on the upper end of that, you know, some of the esports teams, if they're taking it super seriously, they will be factoring in a degree of resistance training, which again, I do highly encourage. I feel like everyone should do some degree of resistance training. However, if you are someone sitting there thinking, 
I just want to be a little bit healthier, then just start with walking. 21 minutes a day, seven days a week, or 30 minutes a day, five days a week, a brisk walk is enough to reap most of the benefits I spoke about in this video. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope that was helpful. Hope it was interesting. I found this really interesting. I was reading through these research articles and I was like, this is really, really cool. So obviously this channel is all about fitness and gaming. So that's definitely relevant. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you keep it locked and I'll catch you in the next one.